Well guys, tonight at midnight, the giveaway for this truck is live. There's gonna be a lot done to it that you will see in to, not tomorrow's video, Wednesday's video. You'll see all of the um, accessories we are putting on this thing to tie it all together. It's gonna look pretty freaking sweet. But the giveaway for this truck, like I said, it goes live tonight at midnight. So if you guys are seeing this on August 31st, it's already live, don't miss out. There's also some things to talk about with Rosine. Reagan Hydro playing the other day and there was nothing she could really do about it. She said she tried to stop as much as she could and avoid hitting a concrete barrier, but unfortunately she could not completely miss it. So the front end, there's a little bit of explaining to do, but anyways, we'll get to that in just a bit. And the winner of this truck has been called Daniel Reynolds from South Carolina and can't wait to see you up here, man, to get your truck. So we got Joshua's second gen here. He actually just got a built transmission put in it. How have you been? happy with that or not happy with that well now that it's built my truck takes forever to shift okay it's so weak. but does it shift proper yeah, it's, it's slammed. it even has reverse yeah. okay so i mean it's it's better we're hoping that this fuel plate in here is not been tampered with so that way we can tamper with and get him another 40 50 60 horse out of it and then his transmission has a little more juice to shift properly because mm -hmm. the guy down at red key gym at maximum overdrive he's like this transmission what do you say it's good for like three 350 or four I or... I could add a couple hundred horse to it, that'd be fine. yeah so i'm guessing it's probably good for like 400 horse and he's like definitely do a zero fuel plate and when you get to it get some injectors in it at least and then your transmission will shift way better yeah. uh, so that's what we're gonna do because the truck as far as we know is stock as it gets yeah but we yeah we really don't know for sure but you know all i know for a fact is that the afc housing still has a tamper proof screw on it so i know for a fact that hasn't been touched and the pump has all this yellow stuff on it meaning that none of the delivery valves have been changed out or any of that kind of stuff um you did take it off at one point and put it back in and so you guys saw that but other than that i think it's pretty darn stock other than possibly a little bit bigger injectors which don't really do you much good unless you get more fuel so that's what we're gonna do and then he said he wants to do serpentine belt oil change oil change should be really quick serpentine belt should be like not that long we've done them before you guys have seen us do them so we're gonna do that and then what else did you do you said serpentine oh air filter yeah, new air filter. and then that should be just about it well joshua found his uh Alan Key said. So this was this was actually hysterical. I get in his truck, I'm sitting in the seat, I'm like, man, why is this seat LMPgear.com for the socks, by the way? But like I was like, why is this seat so far forward? And he's like, oh, I had to I had to move it forward to find these. And he like tosses me the Allen keys and then he looks over at me and he's like Yeah, I was looking for those. I I literally hadn't seen them until just now. <laughs> but it was funny because he like he's like, oh, I had to move the seat to, to find these. And then we were about to go to the auto parts store to buy us. <laughs> yep. And he didn't even, and he just must not register at the moment. That, oh, we crap. spent how long looking for a wrench? Like 25 minutes. Oh my God. Anyways, on another note, we're about to modify the FC housing. He just got the intake taken off and then I'm gonna take out the turbo silencer ring on his turbo. That way he can hear his turbo a little bit more. We did actually find a set of gauges for the truck. So we're gonna try to get that done today as well. There she be. And all this does is makes your turbo whistle a lot more, gives you a lot more sound. All I know for sure, I don't know what all trucks they are or are not on. I think most of the Cummins trucks have a silencer ring and you just take a flathead on the, one of those open edges and just kind of pry it out and that's it. Now we're gonna take a shot back though and suck that out just to make sure we don't have any crap up in there. So we got them a zero plate here. Look at that, flat. That's all zero is, is flat. And then we're gonna put her in here and slide it towards the front of the truck, just a hair, and crank it down. Now hopefully everything works. Accurate readings. Nice. I mean, you did have it idling for 30 minutes, yeah. almost. 
Oh, also this is the first drive with the zero fuel plate, slid forward and turbo silencer ring out. boost gauges isn't accurate but Pounds. Get what was it at? It went up to yeah. Well, I mean, when you bog it, when you're in overdrive and you bog it. Yeah, but it's not hanging out there. You know? No, it's no. Way back down yeah, but like when you bog it, I mean, you know. No, I think it's pretty power, accurate. I feel like I'm yeah, and the thing is, like this truck, unless you do head studs, you don't want to hit 40 pounds of boost all the time. You know what I mean? Like on a stock on stock head bolts, like you don't want to be hitting 40 plus pounds of psi on your boost pressure. It's just not good for it to do it. Look at that U-turn showing off. gauge cluster like that <laughs> they're like what the frick is going on yeah well we didn't have a tower yeah so so here's what's going on though he's going on a colorado elk hunt on tuesday yeah. the fastest we could get gauges in would be maybe by monday and he's got other stuff he's got to do too he's got to run up north and get some stuff from cabela's um and get a bunch of stuff prepped so i told him i said i've got gauges but then once we got here, I said, I guess I don't have a tower, but I've got some little accessory things and we can make it work so you can at least see what's going on at, you know, and you know, well, better than nothing, I guess. You can at least see your exhaust temps, your boost pressure and your trans temp, but your exhaust temps and your trans temp is probably gonna be your two most important things to watch out for. I'm glad I got that and that. Yeah, that'll be. Obviously my engine temp is right there. Yeah, yeah, so. Boost is just, I kind of wanted this to see why my truck is being so slow. For some reason, that turbo's not giving, I would like to see it hit 30. Like, I'm pouring yeah. it and it's getting under 20 until I hit overdrive. Yeah, which, that could be something really, really stupid causing that. But, yeah. I mean, if you could make it to where your wastegate would dump off at like 30, 35, right. that would probably be perfect. So you're still within the safe range, but not, right. you know, overdoing it. I don't know if it's because I need a bigger governor spring to give it more to get it to wind yeah. up. Because that first gen, I know it had a 3500 governor spring. Yeah. And it would spool up to 45. You yeah. Know? So on this track today, we did a oil change, oil filter, zero fuel plate, slid the plate forward towards the front of the truck a little bit, exhaust temp gauge, boost pressure gauge, trans temp gauge. We were going to do the new Serpentine belt, but the one that I had I thought would fit his truck is actually for a first gen Dodge, not a second gen. And so there's just like a really, really, really slight difference in the belt size. I'm talking like an inch or two shorter. New intake on the truck as well. That pretty much sums it up for today in terms of what he did on the thing. And I mean, it's not ideal, obviously. And of course you can see right there, you know, we have three different styles of, you know, pods there to hold your um, gauges. But 
there's just not many other options that we had on hand. I used whatever I had to give him. And since he's going to Colorado, he's gonna be in high elevation in the mountains, you know, with a bunch of gear in the back. I told him, I'm like, man, you've gotta have some gauges. He's like, I can't get gauges in by Monday, you know? And I said, well, I've got some, you know, it's not gonna look pretty necessarily, but you at least have them to have something to monitor what's going on. So hopefully that all works out and he has a good trip and the truck runs good for him. Finally did a test drive with the new green belt on the third gen. That's got the King Ranch all hooked up to the gooseneck because a couple of things. Is this gonna be the last big load for the gooseneck that they'll ever see? When I'm buying. <laughs> Nasty Red is actually being shipped off. All loaded up, ready to go. We'll give everybody the details on where it's gonna be for auction too, so you guys know what's going on. You better explain yourself right now. <laughs> Here's the, there's always a thing. There's always a thing. Yeah, there's always somebody too. Yes. They should have did that. Yes. It's a sad moment. Yeah. I mean, it's a bittersweet thing, but. Yeah. The reality here is, I hate Cummins, not, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? It's an awesome build, but we're just uh, we're at that point to where I don't use the dozer at all. I use it maybe two hours a year, so I don't need to use it. The last two red if you remember back we didn't even take off the plow from snow until like the middle of june yeah yeah so uh it's a better sweet thing but i actually for the first time ever washed all down vacuumed it all out armor all the inside uh, i'm hoping my goal is if i put enough armor on the dash that the glisten will hide the 87 cracks <laughs> <laughs> it's actually only like eight cracks yeah, but but but, but yeah but it could be 87 someday yeah but but, but yeah things to where if you do it get in the hands of the right person they're going to love it they're going to use it and i think it's quite a better thing so we'll see what happens yeah but you know hopefully what comes of selling the dozer the john deere the gooseneck the backhoe the manure spreader hopefully possibly a cab tractor yeah <laughs> hopefully like a cab tractor or an atv or a skid steer something comes into picture That's the goal. which is the plan because like he was saying, he used the dozer like two hours a year at this point, other than probably the first two years he had it. Right. And John, most of it he could do with a skid, like, you know, a bobcat or a skid steer of some sort. It's fun to push trees and stuff over that, but, you know. <laughs> at this point, it served its purpose. I mean, I cut these drives in when we bought this property. I dug a pond and we put some trees over. Yeah. To make that lane going down across the creek so we can get across. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it was well worth having. Yeah. It was fun. I could use a skid steer a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, you definitely got your thirty some thousand dollars worth of yeah. use out of it. So I'm excited to see what they buy and uh, see who, who buys it. Particularly, like, I'm, I'm not so, like, it'll be cool to see who buys the dozer and stuff, but especially Nasty Red. Yeah. There's a little bit more sentimental value there. Yeah, so it's going to be an RES auction off Fry Road in Worcester, Ohio. It's right off Fry Road in Route 30. So, you know, there's an address on my Instagram I already shared. It's September 4th, 9 a.m. is when the auction starts for everything. I don't know exactly when 
the truck's gonna get auctioned off, but everything starts at nine. So I would say if you're gonna, you can do online bidding. I did see that you can register for an account online to be able to bid. I'm sure you have to fill out some kind of a legitimate form and stuff so you're not just like bidding on crap and actually have no intentions of buying it. Which by the way, if you're gonna show up to bid on it, don't don't screw around with the guys if if you know if you actually don't have any intentions of buying just because you could booger up the whole process but if you are interested in buying and serious about it it will be up for auction we got the plow mount just put on this year only used it one time um compound turbos new radiator new fuel system uh air dog i think injectors governor's rings valve springs push rods i mean uh, the bed this uh the bed itself was you know, 5500 $5, bucks yeah. installed the new transmission new transmission was 5500 bucks we've only had the truck for literally like 2000 miles yeah so we got all that money into it and that time into it but i mean more than anything it was just cool for the channel and cool to spend time with malachi as we build it so but but yeah so it's it's ready to go to a new home so if you guys want to bid on it it will be at auction res auction again Worcester, Ohio, off of Route 30 in Fry Road. And if you're interested in anything else, like the back of the dozer, the trailer, I mean, all that stuff's gonna be there the same day. So if you guys wanna get in on that. You got a lot of stuff there and you can see it all online, so. Yeah, and, and there's other stuff there as well, but you know, we'd rather you bet on our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Nasty Red. I told my dad, cause I'm planning on going up there with him. I said, depending on what it gets bitted up to, I might bid on it. <laughs> it could bring anything from 15 to $20,000. You know what I mean? With the truck market right now, 150, thousand miles and it's got all the stuff people would want to do to a 12 valve done you know and the flatbed's almost new it's not all rotted out you know and it there it really is an amazing work truck it, but you know with him having another amazing work truck it, it's the same reason why i never really keep a giveaway tr you know i never really keep a truck for myself i'm like here's a problem reagan's got a nice truck we've got other stuff that we drive and every time i have a giveaway truck i can drive that if i need to and it's like i just i just would feel I don't know, not a satisfied dumping 20 grand into a truck and parking it right. and not using it when somebody else could be using it. So that's why I just always gravitate towards just giving them all away. But, you know, served its purpose. It was a lot of fun and on to the next one. There she be. And she's off. I'm telling you, I know, I know what people are going to say. Why don't you buy it? Why don't you buy it? Here's a problem, guys. I'm not willing to pay him as much as he can get for it. And therefore, and, and, and my dad's not gonna give me like a steal of a deal on the truck. It's not like he's gonna be like, oh, well, you know, you're my son and people would love to see it on the channel. So yeah, I'll give it to you for, you know, 10 grand. It's just not gonna happen, you know? And, and I respect my dad for, you know, him being that way because that, you know, is part of the reason I am the way that I am and driven to do as much as I can with my time. But I mean, it, you know, I'd love to buy it off him, but I know that he can get 15 to 20 grand for it. And with the things that I'd want to do to it, like I'd want to do new paint just so it's like dang near show quality, which it's fine right now. Like it's, it's not bad paint. It's just not, it's just not like a pretty paint job. Like it's just not like, oh wow, that's nice. You know, so it's hard because you know between that i'd be in another five grand for pain and then i'd want to do another bunch of stuff with the interior and i'd want to do a bunch of just little stuff that you know really i'd love to do to the truck if i gave it away and i know people are going to say oh but it's sentimental and whatever else first off i'm not going to keep it and as you you guys know that i really haven't been keeping any any trucks i can't drive them all and I'm just in a situation right now where I'm trying to like pay off Reagan and I's house and build our dream house and stuff more. So, you know, I'm not gonna dump 15, 20 grand or whatever he's wanting for it to park it in my barn. Like, I, and then I'm gonna wanna do a bunch of other stuff to it to get it nicer. Out test driving the white truck because I had to put that serpentine belt on it the other day and it runs amazing with this new belt. Everything's perfect. I just wanted to test drive it and make sure everything's good. You know, cause there'll be people like, oh, why are you driving it? It's, it's a giveaway truck, it's somebody else's truck now. It's like, okay, first off, my name is still on the title. And obviously if anything happened to it, I have insurance on it, I would cover it, you know, whatever insurance wouldn't cover and the guy's still gonna get an amazing truck, whether it be this one or if it were wrecked, he gets a different one. He's gonna get a great truck no matter what. And first off, I'm not gonna like change out the serpentine belt and then not test drive the truck before it gets picked up by him, you know? Like he's gotta drive it down to South Carolina. It just doesn't make a lot of sense, you know? But um, the winner of this truck, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but Daniel Reynolds, from South Carolina, that's where it's going. So 
congratulations, man. It was a pleasure talking with you today. Can't wait to see you and meet you and pick up your truck. So anyways, guys, until we see you again on the videos here, giveaway for the black third gen starts tonight. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.